This YouTuber has already raised $100,000 from his fans by selling his YouTube channel, and it's turning out to be a huge scam, and I'm here to tell you why. Let me start by saying I'm a fan of this YouTube channel, which kind of makes this a bit of a weird story because I've reached out to them in the past and said how much I like their work. It's a channel called Disrupt who you may have come across. They have 1.4 million subscribers and their creator, Jack, produces many documentaries about everything from computer viruses to hackers. And if you're a nerd, it's pretty great stuff. But today, Jack posted something different from his normal videos. He's selling his channel. I am selling this channel. Well, a portion of it. Because a change is coming. Path A and Path B. Path A, I believe, is the best option. This is the equity crowdfunding path. This means that right now, at this present moment, you can own a portion of Disrupt. For a minimum of $100, you will receive 23 shares of the Disrupt Corporation. In return, you'll get a percentage of the net profit that this channel makes every single year. So right from the start, this all sounds pretty interesting, right? You invest $100, you get a portion of a YouTube channel. It's sort of like buying a business, and it's sort of like supporting a creator that you like. You might be tempted to think it's the best of both worlds. I mean, just listen to all the cool stuff he plans to use the money for. And in return, my team and I will use that capital to expand the Disrupt operation and bring you feature-length films, shows, and virtual reality content. It's a compelling pitch. You're making money, and he's going to spend your investment on better videos. It's a win-win, right? Now, Jack does mention a second path if he doesn't raise the full amount, but he pretty quickly labels that a bad idea. Path B is the path that we'll have to go down if we do not reach our funding goal by the deadline. This would mean a complete restructuring of the internal operations here at Disrupt. This path is not ideal. So, if you want to secure the future of the Disrupt down path A, please consider investing. Now this is where the first cracks in his story start to show. He never tells us what path B is or why he'd have to take it. In fact, he kind of does this weird appeal of both, hey, on the one hand, this is a really serious investment. And on the other hand, if you don't invest as a fan, your favorite channel could die, which is really weird. But you might not notice it watching the rest of the video. You might get swept away by all the beautiful graphics, which sort of serve as an advertisement for what you're gonna get if you help invest in the channel. But things really go sour when we actually go to invest and we go to the website where we invest at because that's where we learn things aren't as advertised. Let's start with the amount he's raising, $500,000 for 10% of his channel. The website claims that Disrupt is valuing themselves at $10.7 million. That's what they're claiming 100% of their company is worth. Now, this is absolutely insane. I own a channel of a similar size, and there's no way, right? You could argue my channel is worth $10 million, $10 million, $10 million. Okay, well, technically, if you ignore the $10 million studio, there's no way that my YouTube channel by itself is worth $10 million, okay? I guess that's what I'm trying to say. And that's how I know that his isn't either. And when you check his financials, this actually becomes even more clear. Because you might have been wondering this whole time, why is he raising $500,000 specifically at such an insane valuation? Well, it has something to do with the fact, I think, that he's $500,000 in debt. Call it a crazy hunch. Uh, but I found this fact out at the bottom of his financial document, all the way down, all 14 pages down, the very last line, you will see this. Disrupt owes $466,000, and they also owe attorney fees. So basically, they owe $500,000. That's what they say, aka all of it to pay off the debts. So for those of you who have been paying attention, forget about films, forget about the metaverse, forget about virtual reality, your money is going off to pay Jack's debt. And he's trying to sell all of this to you as if it's some shiny turd straight from Mark Zuckerberg's metaverse and it's worth $500,000, but it isn't. And here's the thing, it gets even worse because wait till you hear how he got in debt in the first place. Because it turns out that Jack had a co-founder this whole time of Disrupt who owned 
50% of the company. And one day, Jack decides he's going to buy him out of his 50% for, wait for it, $500,000. So, yes, you're hearing this right. He bought out 50% of Disrupt for $500,000 and then is selling his fans 10% of the company for the same $500,000 because he can't afford the quarterly payments. Obviously, because he overpaid for it, which is very ironic. And in all of this, he tries to pretend it's about the metaverse and hides the actual financial truth at the bottom of his disclosure. And by the way, that disclosure that I'm telling you guys about, the really important one, um, it's not in his video, and it's actually at the very bottom of his crowdfunding website. So all you had to do to learn about the super important fact is go into the link, scroll to the very bottom, get that document, scroll to the very bottom of that document, and finally you could learn the truth. Guys, are you not seeing how big of a scam this is? I mean, to be clear, I have no problem if people want to crowdfund for really anything, as long as they're honest. If he told people, hey, I'm in debt and I'm trying to raise money for it, I ain't got no problem with that. But he doesn't tell you that because obviously you're not going to spend money on his bad financial decisions. You're going to spend money if you think you're building the future and you think you're getting rich, which I guess you are building the future, but it's just, it's just Jack's future, which, you know, is different. I did reach out to Disrupt to ask if there's some context that I'm missing here. And so far I've gotten no response, but on Discord, he has been answering some questions. So I want to go over that. Apparently the full story is that Jack says that his co-owner originally bought Disrupt, 50% of it anyways, for $10,000 a while ago. And Jack seems to have done most of the work in the interim. This co-founder then turned into some super Gary V villain and wanted to turn everything into NFTs and sell crypto coins. And Jack was against it because he didn't want you investing in bad financial decisions. Um, and so he wanted a buyout and he got a buyout for $500,000. But it's here where things start to get complicated because when Jack started throwing his partner under the bus as some NFT supervillain, his partner decided to climb from underneath it and clear his name. He jumped in the Discord and started disproving the claims one by one, starting with crypto. He says, hi there, I am the partner with significant creative differences. Spoiler, there was mention of a disrupt crypto coin or slinging NFTs. I think that's a misguided interpretation of my vision. And that's not the only thing that might be untrue. Remember, Jack said that his partner only invested 10K, but it turns out it was a lot more than that. Quote, I invested a lot more than 10K into disrupt. That is another point that requires clarification. 10K was initial bankroll, but the major investment came from three years of salaries being paid, overhead, rent for office space, studio equipment, etc. We later learned that he probably invested around $200,000 because he says the 500K buyout was a little over a 2X on his investment, which he rightfully points out is a terrible return on a YouTube channel investment where mostly your dollars would go to zero. So it turns out Jack's co-founder isn't some predatory lending supervillain, nor was it true when Jack said that his co-founder even asked for the buyout or set the conditions. Quote, just as another note, I never wanted to sell my stake in the company. Jack offered the valuation. I did not set it there. That was his offer that I accepted in an effort to resolve amicably. Now, this all contradicts what Jack has said directly in a follow-up video that he did after I reached out to him. He said his co-founder is the one who set the price. This is where the $466,000 of debt can be seen on our financials. This is what the prior member has set their price at in order to depart from Disrupt. So who's telling the truth here? Well, it looks like it's not Jack because recently he's deleted his comment saying his co-founder only put in 10K and that his co-founder set the price. Instead, he changed it to this. Quote, I have updated the previously typed message. In 2017, a co-founder and I started Disrupt as an LLC. In 2021, we settled on a buyout agreement. Now, what I find crazy about this is that while changing his story, Jack doesn't acknowledge what he's changing here. Because remember, we've gone from the co-founder is a villainous NFT huckster who bought his company for $10,000 and demanded a buyout for 500K. Now it's looking like his co-founder invested $200,000, didn't push NFTs, and didn't even want to be bought out. And look, I'm not here to settle who's right in their business disagreements. I, I just don't even care. I'm just here to point out that Jack is disguising his business problems as financial opportunities, which they're not. And when he gets caught, he continues to lie and throws his co-founder out of the bus when it 
just seems like they basically have creative differences. I don't know. It just seems like Jack is acting like one of these delusional people who go on Shark Tank with $5 in sales and are seeking a million dollars for 1% of their company. Except for the fact, instead of pitching to Mark Cuban, he's pitching to his fans who might not know why it's a bad investment because he's deliberately hid it from them. But luckily, people are finally figuring out what he did and he's rightfully getting ripped apart by his audience for it. And that's kind of the good news, that he's unlikely to reach his goal. And the other good news is that plan B isn't that big of a deal. The co-founder would get 51% of the company and it seems like he doesn't want to do that much different. Jack would continue producing content, fans don't lose money, and things just return back to the status quo. Honestly, this is just such a stupid drama for no reason. Jack decided to swindle his fans out of 500K because he didn't like his co-founder by selling them a company at an even worse price than he bought it for. And by the way, remember, he can't pay the debt because obviously it was a terrible decision. And when he gets caught trying to sell this bad debt, he doubles down and tries to tell everyone that he's saving the company from his co-founder, who by all accounts seems like a pretty nice guy. And yet, has there ever been an apology? No. And for all these reasons, the crazy valuation, the bad debt, the lies, I'm out.